，多疼起呗。你就躺在那，躺在那啥子多？啊，你你躺在那。你唱点啥子歌嘛？等会儿你唱来来啥子歌？唱点哈。啊，打打打台子的时候就可以唱点歌。默默唱那个，我老老老老气了，他他不喜欢听那个。唱下他康宁情歌么嘛？康宁情歌。啊，跑马溜溜的山上。溜溜的音乐，短短溜溜的走在，滴溜溜的晨游，就这种歌，都唱得来嘛？这种。Here in the rural areas, people are doing the kinds of things they've done for hundreds of years, but when people have serious problems, which is starting to happen now as modernization takes place, even in rural areas. Um, people don't know what to do often outside of their own families, and they may need help. There are um, the uh, Women's Federation uh, cadres, as they're called, people who are located in the uh, local areas who are helpful, who might help women and families. But the problem is that many of them didn't get any training, and they don't really know how to do social work in any formal way. The rural world is is still very developing, um, struggling with uh, poverty in a lot of places, and women's needs are not met. Their husbands are all gone out, or mostly gone out to the city to work. So they need to uh, farm the land, they need to uh, take care of the household, they need to take care of the children, and they need to take care of the, the elderly. So their burden is, is very, very high. Essentially, you draw a rudimentary map of a village and try to wind your way through the middle of it. And what you're really trying to do is get a sense of the economics, of the activities, of the resources. And uh, it's a very participatory approach. So the visitor is taken on a walk by the villagers, and they give you their perspective. A fairly typical example in China of a village where the men have left, they're working outside the village, they might be working in towns nearby and commuting from here, but more likely they're working further away and coming back maybe once or twice in a year. The phenomenon that we refer to as the left behind women. When families grow larger, do we redistribute the land over time? Every 30 years. Yeah, every 30 years. You know, traditionally women are not seen as leaders, they're not seen as decision makers, um, they're not seen as those who can manage a project. And in this participatory approach and uh, seeking out the expertise of women really um, captures that, that belief that we have that the women are capable, they do have knowledge, they are good managers. And what we're hearing after the projects have been done is the women's self-esteem has gone up tremendously. Today we want to do something called PRA, Participatory Rural Assessment. Many times experts have come to an area, they've developed a project, and it didn't work because it's maybe not what people need or it wasn't what they wanted in the first place. Actually, you're the experts about this area. There's a great sense in China that it's the government that initiates change, and change is initiated by the experts and those with resources and power. What PRA methods do, it conveys a message that they are actually experts in this situation. The outcome usually of a PRA method is something visual that can be put up in the village afterwards. It's uh, a product of a collective effort and it stays in the village as the work is done to work on those issues.
Each group will do it differently. But this group had an interesting approach. They, they started out with their kind of dream of what the village could be, a place of prosperity, a place of peace, and worked backwards from there to actual tangible needs that exist here. We did a, a PRA exercise with this village group uh, in 2006. The one group that came forward with their map said, we need a road to connect our village to the market. Uh, we need that for getting equipment into the village. We need that for getting our products out. And in 2010, we met with the group again, and they were asked to bring pictures of the outcomes of the project. And uh, this group brought pictures of a finished road. And they had implemented the project as they said. They um, identified local business people that could uh, make contributions. They contacted government and got contributions from government. But there were also, as I understand it, up to 400 volunteers that worked on, actually did much of the physical work on this road. How many families living in the village? So, we have how many people in the village? 800. Oh, more than 800. Baba. Every morning, I prepare food for my father-in-law. It's been several years I've been feeding him this way, ever since he got sick. We have become a harmonious family because I have learned to treat my parents-in-law very well. And... When she was only taking care of her father-in-law, she didn't have any problems. It only became difficult when her husband also got sick, and she had to take care of the whole family. That was hard, taking care of both of them at the same time. She started to feel heavy and depressed. She first came to see me at that time. She had completely lost confidence in her life, and she didn't know what to do. She wanted to find a job outside the village and leave the burden to her mother-in-law. The social work training taught me not to give advice without listening. We had learned to put ourselves in the other person's position. So I listened to her first then suggested that she think of her mother-in-law's position. You're still young, I said, but your mother-in-law is old now. She's in the same situation as you are with a sick husband and a sick son. You can face reality. What about her? She's over 70 years old. How can she face it? We talked a lot about our obligations to treat our parents-in-law well because our children are watching, and other people are also watching. We agreed that if we love our husband, we should show our love, and life will become easier. Our women's group also helped her. We encouraged her to participate in our activities and have fun with us. Just recently, she told me that she's more confident about her life now that she has more strength to do things. We built a lot of capacity around the service providers of Women Federation. And the most impressive things that we've heard for me is they start to listen. Because before, uh, they were carrying orders. So they're not really coming from their heart to really help the people per, per se. They are basically earning a salary and do their job uh, in disseminating information from the top. Um, but after the training, um, they really being moved and they understand the needs of the rural women whom they supposed to serve. Before I took part in the training, my way of working was to follow orders from our leaders and do what I was told, even if things didn't always work out. 
The social work project taught me to begin by listening to our villagers' needs, and then to make sure that every project has their participation. Now, when we pass on the villagers' concerns to the leaders, they know what our villagers really need. <laughs> we used to buy seeds from some seed company, but we never had enough for all the villagers. Now the villagers tell us the amount and which seeds they feel are best. They know which kind will bring benefits to their harvest. Only after they tell us do we inform our leaders what the village really needs. In this way, everyone appreciates our efforts and our work is more effective. During my social work training, I saw women from other villages making parts for electronics. What a great way to earn extra money for vegetables and other things they need. They do it when they're not busy farming and earn more than 10 yuan per day. So I learned the technique and taught the women in our village how to do it. I also found someone in town to buy our products. In the beginning, they were not very good and many of our products were returned. So I arranged for extra training to improve their technique. Now they make electronics at home, and some of them earned three to four hundred yen last month. So now there are many of these kind of mutual aid groups throughout the project areas and at the beginning the family members just laughed at them and didn't believe that they would be able to do it. Once they could do it, they are a lot more confident and they are able to help other people. When people have some difficulties in life uh, or not available to uh, farm in the field, they would gather together and help them to do those farming. And they would take turn to help each other. And this kind of social capital is really uh, precious in rural areas. <laughs> In the past, every time there was a problem in the village, the women always stayed at home and thought it was none of their business. Let the men do it. 
But after participating in the social work training, the women started to feel more competent. They began to recognize the problems and feel concerned. After that, we organized the women in our village to try to solve their problems by themselves. They come to our activities voluntarily because they realize that it is in their best interest to be involved. If you want to increase your income, you have to work hard. Before, women always had this wrong idea that working in the field is a man's job. But since the training, they now work in the field as the men do. Do you see the women in the field? It's hard to plant rice. There are so many obstacles. In our village, women help each other in the field. They plant lots of things, but rice is their main crop and they help each other so they can save time and then the rice crop can grow well. And you know, women in our village are pleased to help each other. We had a really tough time before. We were very poor. You can't even imagine how hard it was. Now our lives are so much better because the women of my wife's training helped us a lot. With their help and our own hard work, it's okay now. You see, 80% of the work in the fields is done by women because men are working out of the village. People always say that women hold up half of the sky, but I say women hold up more than half of the sky. That's for sure. <laughs> Who built this pumping station? It was um, originally built by the army. This was an old pumping station which needed repairs. The women in our village were part of a project which received funding from the government to rebuild the pump. The pumping station is very important to the growing of the rice crop. It was much more difficult before. But now, with enough water to irrigate, the rice will grow well. They are now talking about reaching further. They share with their neighbors, with other villagers, and they, those share with maybe with other people in other villages. And the Women's Federation helps to disseminate some of this experience so that it goes beyond their areas. For example, we bring together the trained women from the Shandong site, from the uh, Inner Mongolia sites, and also the Sichuan sites. And they talk. They talk about their initiatives, their ideas. And during that sharing, they continue to spread to others so that, you know, some project that started here in Sichuan is heard about in Inner Mongolia and somebody gets the idea, well, this might work here too. Let's try that. So there's a kind of synergy in the sharing and people can sustain this project because now the government has actually said that we need to train three million more social workers in China and they want to develop more schools of social work and they want to um, have more training for others. And so what that means is this idea of uh, being able to support people to facilitate their growth and development and provide services is seen as an important step in, um, in China's development.